This is East Carolina All-American Brian Packard, and we're talking pirate baseball in the sports objective. You're watching Extra Innings, presented by PGXGloves.com on the Sports Objective. Join us every Sunday night on Facebook Live, our YouTube channel, and X as we talk East Carolina baseball. We'll analyze the previous week while also taking a look at what lies ahead. Now, let's talk Pirate Baseball. Welcome into Extra Innings right here on the Sports Objective, presented by pgxgloves.com we'll be talking more about that later on in the show but if you have a kid uh, playing baseball or softball they have great batting gloves they've got golf gloves i can't wait uh, for all you golfers out there uh, to go out there and play golf and maybe i can here pretty soon but we're going to be talking pirate baseball tough week a mixed bag if you will two and two uh bubba rosenbaum for china grove uh, we're very excited to have our guest tonight yeah, we are. Um, very excited to have the play-by-play voice of the Pirates in baseball, and that is Scott Rogers. Scooter, welcome back. Thank you, guys. Thanks for having me on tonight. Hey, by the way, Scooter, before we get started, do you have a walk-up song we can play? Bubba started that uh, where we have Kyle. We have Kyle from the Grange, so we play ZZ Top for him, and Bubba's China Grove from Doobies. Do you have a walk-up song, uh, a song that you like or one that would fit you? I would have to uh, I'd have to think on it. I'm not sure right. what my walk-up song would be. Uh, next, I will have it for you uh, before next time I come on. All right, that's your homework. I know you're doing homework uh, for tomorrow night's game is uh, the Seahawks. I'll tell you one thing. Um, and we, we didn't talk about this in our pregame meeting, but I'll tell you one thing. That is a series. If it's basketball or baseball, they call it, you know, for basketball, uh, Scott, they call it the war on the <laughs> – we're on the shore, and it just is amazing how crazy the Pirates didn't play well last time. We'll talk about that game for tomorrow night you're prepping for, but let's uh, rewind a little bit. I know uh, first with the Elon game, what were your thoughts on that game uh, last week? Good thing about you know that Elon game, I thought, was how East Carolina really just came out and handled business in that game. He got out to an early lead. Chris Kaler gave you a, a really good start, which – really saved some pitching going into that weekend series against UTSA. But that was a game East Carolina, you know, knew that they needed to win, and they went out there and just handled business from start to finish. They really did, and that ballpark is really conducive to home runs, right? It is. It's a uh, it's a pretty small ballpark. I think it's 385 to dead center and pretty oh, wow. short down the lines as well. And so – it definitely is one of the smaller ballparks that the play, that the Pirates will play in this year. Yeah, to your point, Chris Kaler, excellent start. So it was a little bit different from other midweek games, you know, where you had had more of a Johnny Holstaff approach. Um, you know, obviously part of that was um, because of Kaler's effectiveness. Five innings, one run, just that was allowed on the solo bomb there, um, I guess about the third or fourth inning. And then you had um, just two hits surrendered, uh, two strikeouts and a walk. Um, excellent outing, as noted um, by Coach Godwin, um, by Chris Kaler. Yeah, and, you know, like I said, that gave East Carolina, obviously, the opportunity to get some, quote, unquote, bullpen guys in there to to get their bullpen games in before the weekend series and everything. But it was such good to see Kaler have a good start because that's one thing that is going to be a key thing for this team going forward is having someone go four or five innings in a midweek start. Was that the plan? Absolutely not. But when you get that out of your starter in those midweek games, it helps your pitching so much. And, you know, for him to be as good as he was, you know, it really shut Elon down from that first inning to the fifth inning and really the whole game they were shut down as well. And that was a good Elon team coming in. Their offensive numbers were really good. And so that, I think that was one thing that really stood out was – how well East Carolina did against an offensive team like they had coming in. 
And something else about that game that Cliff Godwin noted um, in his weekly chat today with Patrick Johnson and Steven Igo, and that was just, in his opinion, that that was our best performance of the year, most complete performance of the year in, in all phases. Yeah, and it, I think it was too. You know, they like I said, they hit the ball very well. They got out to that early lead. Pitching was pretty much dominant throughout, and defensively it was a clean game as well. And, you know, certainly would put that game up there in the top of what East Carolina has played this year. Scott, one of the bright spots for this week, you were talking about Kaler, but uh, we'll talk about uh, obviously the games at UTSA in just a minute. But the pitching this week, uh, I tell you what, with uh, Norby, um, one of the guys that Mully has talked about and a guy that I think is stepping up and he's really coming into his groove and command would be Eric Ritchie. I really like what he's been doing. He has. He's really looked good over the past couple outings. And and even Coach Godwin had mentioned that, you know, first part of this year, saying that both him and Danny Bill are, have always been kind of slow starters coming into the year. And once you hit that conference play starting-wise, that's kind of when they really start to take off. And that's been the same thing this year. And if Richie can continue to be as, as effective as he's been here over the past couple of outings and also someone like Danny Bill, who looked really good this past weekend, you both – you get both of those guys at their best, they're pretty much unhittable, and that's going to be a key for this bullpen going forward. Yeah, Something about, else. Of, sorry, go ahead, Dave. I was just going to add to that too, Scott, is uh, you know you always hear the cliche in sports about how freshmen won't be freshmen towards the end of the season. i tell you one thing. Uh, he's gotten his lumps, but Norby looked really good also. he I was That was another bright spot for me this week. Yeah, he did, and – you know, the one thing that was so good about that was, one, it gave him a ton of confidence coming out of that outing because mm-hmm. this is a guy that certainly has had some some rough spots to start the year in some outings. But for him to go, I think it was three innings in that in that bullpen appearance against a team that obviously hit the ball very good this past weekend, I don't think he gave up. If, if he gave up a run, it was maybe one or so. Uh, but this is the one that obviously from that left side, he worked really quick. And if he can be like that, he's going to be a big part of this bullpen going down, you know, the rest of the year. And we knew that Norby had that in him. I know this coaching staff has had the utmost confidence in Norby throughout the season. And I think that really showed what his potential can be on the mound. Something else of note uh, before we talk more about that UTSA series on something um, at that Elon game, uh, I was able to attend that. Uh, got there, I guess, about the top of the third and um, with that 4 p.m. first pitch made it difficult. But there was, I think, the box score, and, and I thought it would be a little bit more than this. But I think it said 650, 700 in attendance. And if that was the case, I think probably 500 of those were Pirates. Yeah, it was. Uh, I talked about this after the game on the, the car ride back with our crew, and I said – it was crazy because when East Carolina, you know, got a hit or did something good, whatever, it was so loud there. And then when Elon hit that home run in that game, it was virtually dead silent. It was, I, I, it was quite. I think it was funny, you know, how qu- quiet it was, being that it was at their home ballpark and everything. But it was awesome to see so many Pirate fans there making that trip. And you know, and and even this weekend at UTSA, the Pirates had a good contention there. You know, you might have been able to hear on the broadcast, some purple gold chants going through. I heard uh, it. Yeah, and, and so that's one thing that's really been impressive throughout this whole year is how well Pirate fans have traveled to these roads, to not only road series, but road games overall. I was yeah, just- shout, shout out to Chew Justice. Uh, Chew Justice um, makes a lot of the road games. He and his wife uh, love to travel. Uh, and I know last year, it seems like it was, they were up at Cincinnati. I know they've been down to the conference tournament. And then, um, you know, correct me if I'm wrong, Scooter, I believe I saw maybe Jaden Winter's dad in attendance. I know there was a, there was a lot of family members there. Uh, Dixon Williams' parents were there, got to meet uh, Joey Barini's mother for the first time. I know she was in attendance. And so, uh, and even, yeah, I think Sean Bailey, former football player, was in attendance at least on Friday night. And I think he's actually working at UTSA is what I heard now. Uh, but yeah, there was a, I mean, there was a ton of uh, parents there and that's one thing is these parents make a lot of the trips to these games and that shows obviously how much they care about this program and, and seeing their kids play at a high level. One baseball, uh, non-baseball question I want to ask about San Antonio. Did you get to see any of the, the city? We Dallas? did. Uh, 
Yeah, uh, Sean Phillips, who is our uh, social media guy for baseball this year, me and him ventured out Saturday night down to uh, what's called the Riverwalk area of San yeah. Antonio. They've got a lot of shops and restaurants and, and stuff like that. We probably hung out for an hour and a half, two hours down there, and just kind of walked around and you know had some food, did some of that things, got to see the Alamo while we were there. But it was cool. it was really a neat city. Um, you know, they had, like I said, a lot of restaurants and a lot of bars and stuff like that around. And there were so many people down there too. I couldn't believe how many people were there and never really realized how big kind of of a tourist attraction San Antonio is. Cause you could definitely tell that there were a lot of tourists there visiting just for that purpose. No doubt about it. I wish our, <laughs> Hey scooter, I wish our visit was better uh, um, this weekend, but overall I just uh, wanted to tell, I know Bubba's getting ready to do comments I think that uh, we get spoiled being baseball fans. We're two and two on the week. Uh, it could be disastrous. We could be zero and four, uh, one and three, two and two is par. Uh, we want to do better than that. But overall, uh, you know, the there's a mixed bag. But at least, uh, at least there are things. One thing I tell people all the time. I said, um, you can't fix talent. You know, uh, there were some issues there. I'm, I'm sure that they would like to. I know Coach talked about it on 94-3, the game today with Patrick Johnson and Steven Igo. Uh, 11 free 90s, uh, that's not good, and you're not going to win a lot of games that way. Um, but those are things that can be fixed, and, and uh, I'll, I'll get to another point I have, but I know you're limited on time with us. Uh, you're generous because you've got a couple things you're working on, including a big baseball game tomorrow prep for it. But, Bubba, go ahead to the comments real quick. Yeah, and Johnny Robertson chimes in. He says, other than last year's Charlottesville Regional Final, the Pirates had not lost a game by more than two runs uh, since Tulane, and Ricky Castro shut them out last year. Um, so, interesting nugget there, as always, from, from JR. And then uh, he also said, reality check, the Pirates' uh, six losses have been by a combined total of eight runs. They just need to – you know, clean up and fine tune some issues, and and they'll be just fine. Yeah, I love Johnny's stats. Uh, Johnny is uh, Jr. is the best, and I can't compete with you and uh, and Johnny and Scooter. Man, you guys are are tremendous on stats. That's not numbers are not my thing. But um, Scooter, getting back to that Friday game, you know, Trey is Savage. Um, undoubtedly, it was. His his worst outing of the year. You know, at the same time, he he did give us a chance, and um, you, you really you look at it, I and mean, they really just singled us to death, and uh, and they were and Trey was able to escape the damage in the first, uh, while not as much you know, a little bit later on, but uh, and you were playing from behind, pretty much your. Not pretty much. You were playing from behind that entire game after facing that forty nothing deficit going into the middle innings. Yeah, and you know that was one thing you know that I I said throughout the weekend was that UTSA was was really prepared for East Carolina. You could tell that you know with them scoring in every first inning this weekend, that was one thing that jumped out with them and how they really attacked our starting rotation very good and. You know, you talk about them singling us to death with how many singles they had. And a lot of those those hits, I mean, they just hit the ball all over that field. They found every single hole that they could. And, you know, they, that was obviously a well-coached team coming in. And, you know, I, it, it, it really surprises me that they had a losing record coming into that series. Just from what we saw this weekend, not only at the plate, but what we saw on the mound a lot of times too. But I think UTSA certainly is going to give – you know, a lot of teams, some fits here in the American Conference. And that team is certainly going to be one, I think, that's going to be at the top of the standings once the year is over with. But, yeah, I mean, going back to Trey and, you know, he he certainly limited the damage as much as he could from them. Uh, and, and you know, they all three of them know they weren't their best this weekend. And, you know, this is a, a team that I've said all year that once they, they know that they didn't do something right, they want to fix it. They want to get better and, and get back to their winning ways. And so I think you're going to see a, a a much different team, not only tomorrow night against UNCW, but also this weekend against UAB. I wanted to get your thoughts on this very quickly, Scott, because you know, Justin Butts chimes in. 
anything. I just wanted to say I thought the umpires this weekend were very inconsistent. So from someone who was there, obviously, uh, give us your take. Yeah, I thought that uh, you know they. I thought that they did an okay job. Uh, you know, our angle wasn't quite the best where I was. I was kind of off, kind of towards the left-handed batter's box, kind of looking directly towards shortstop. So I didn't have the best angle. Uh, but yeah, there was some, there was some things too. I thought that they could have handled maybe a little bit better with, uh, you know, with the chirpiness between the teams and everything. But, uh, but yeah, I mean, as coach Godwin says to these guys, you know, you got to control what you control and that's obviously something that you can't, uh, but I'm sure we will see much worse at some point this season. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, no doubt about it. In fact, uh, I know that Justin is an umpire, so I respect his opinion. And I've tried to, uh, since Justin is an umpire, I've tried to not, and a referee, not an official, not to get on the officials too much because people know how I, f- I can I can be uh, tough on them. Uh, probably the toughest of anybody on our panel, uh, on our show. But uh, I, one of the th- questions I had for you, Scott, and I know we have a couple people that are chiming in here on Facebook and YouTube, is uh, it seemed uh, – Bubba and I were talking off air, texting. It seemed that the guys uh, – this is my opinion. They seem to be playing tight this weekend, like playing not to lose. Is that fair for me to say that? Um, I would say maybe to some degree. Um, I think a lot of these guys certainly have had some pressure on them. And, so and Coach Godwin – yeah, and, and Coach Godwin mentioned that tonight on uh, Inside Pirate Athletics saying that a lot of these guys have just had a lot of pressure and trying to get them to play more freely, um, like someone like Carter Cunningham has done this year. And I think doing that, too, you know, once they realize, hey, you know, let's take some pressure off and play a little bit more freer, that you would see some more success from some of these guys as well. Yeah, he was talking about – they were talking about Jacob Sterling and – and with uh, J Dub, and uh, it, it's it's because they want so bad to win, and they want so bad for the purpose. Not like um, I don't think it's as much when people talk about focus. I don't think it's as much focus as like Coach talks about uh, Coach G. That would be to just go out there and have fun. It's a game. It's a game to have fun. And when you put too much pressure, then all of a sudden, when you don't want to lose, you don't want to make make a mistake. Like he was saying you're going to make a mistake because it's in your mind. So just going out there and playing pirate baseball. Yeah. And, you know, that's one thing, you know, with, with going back to that Frank playing freely comment, you know, I think if everybody kind of did that, you know, you take that pressure off. Right. And so, you know, playing more freely, playing, as you said, treating it like it's a game. And if you mess up, shug it off and, and move forward, I think is a big thing. And, you know, I think that this team will might realize that heading into tomorrow night and this weekend as well. Kind of transitioning into Saturday's game, obviously Friday it was largely what you expect to see on a Friday night. You know, not necessarily from Trey Savage, but just the lower scoring game. Uh, Saturday was more like a a midweek game, uh, your stereotypical um, high scoring game. You know, a lot of pitchers. You know, uh, the Pirates fell behind and then were able to to come back. And um, because of the performance of Wyatt Lunsford Shingman there in the middle innings, you know, you really had um, you had the opportunity to build that 12 to 4 advantage. And the Pirates ended up needing every single one of those runs. Yeah, they did. And, you know, I think that's a a great way to put it with. Uh, saying it was kind of like a midweek game on on Saturday. And, you know, that was certainly one of the longer games that East Carolina has had this year. But you go back to Friday night and the job that Ethan Norby did out of the pen, I think really helped East Carolina on Saturday because that allowed you to have a fresh Wyatt Lunsford Chinkman and it allowed you to have a fresh Danny Bill in that game. Uh, but, yes, there's – in, in you know, it was good to have that 12 to 4 lead. They had that grand slam to bring it back within two. Uh, and then East Carolina grabbed a couple of runs there in the ninth inning, but they still found a way to win. And, you know, with a lot of games this year, the Pirates have done that. You go back to that Cal State Fullerton game, uh, you know, the North Carolina walk off to clinch that series. 
they found ways to win. And, and you know, that's one thing that this team certainly can do. They haven't been able to do it in some games this year, but they've done it in games. And so they know how to do it, and they showed that again on Saturday. No doubt about it. And I know, uh, Scooter, with the time we have left, I know we're running a little bit long with you. We're trying really hard to get you out of here. What about for Sunday? What were your thoughts for Sunday's yesterday's game? Sunday, you know, the one thing that jumped out to me was, you know, once again, UTSA got out to that early lead. But East Carolina would come back. They would answer with a run or two. But then right again, UTSA would come back and answer them. And they just never could quite get over that hump on Sunday, I thought. Uh, you know, it's it's hard to lose a game when you hit. I think it was four home runs in that game, but three of those were, for, were solo homers. And so, you know, all your runs came off of home runs in that game and without having a lot of anybody on base, but for one of them, that certainly hurt. And, you know, they had their chances to get some things going in that Sunday game and never could quite do it. But, you know, it was it was definitely, I think Sunday was going to be one on who outslugged who and, and it ended up being UTSA. Yeah, Scooter, that's a great point. Uh, that's what I was telling Johnny Gardner uh, as well as Matt Semenza yesterday morning. Just that, you know, I felt like going into that that game, you know, based on how UTSA had had so many quality at-bats against Trey and Zach, I said, I, I, I believe that we're going to have to score seven or eight runs to win and and it ended up that way, obviously losing six to five, and and it was much like on uh, Friday, you know, where throughout that game we were playing from behind. Yeah, and you know there was certainly some some defensive mistakes there. You had some pass balls, uh, you had a couple of errors in that game as well, and you know you take those out of the equation. Does East Carolina win that game? Um, you know, but certainly you got to clean up some of those errors and some other things in that game too. Just a lot of areas they weren't weren't quite sharp, I think was the thing. But it, it's like we said just a few moments ago, it's nothing that they are not able to to go in and clean up immediately. And so that's why I think you're going to see a big improvement this coming week. Yeah, yeah. Ry- Riley Johnson's shoulder uh, popped out. And, and because of that, you saw Bristol Carter getting the start in center field in Sunday's game. And you had that miscommunication uh, that you kind of referenced there early on. Um, and, you know, b- between he and uh, Luke Nowak. Yeah, that, uh, you know, there was a couple infield mistakes, too. On Star that Sunday had game. Yeah, yeah, Star had that one error. Um, you know, and you take away those things, you know, I think it's a much different game, you know, especially that fly ball in, in left field that, that you had that communication issue on. Um, you know, I think that resulted in a run, if, I'm, if, if memory serves me correctly. Uh, you know, there's just so many things that you could take away from that game, and it could be a totally different conversation we're having right now. Right, and then I know there was one uh, – I was trying to remember the base runner, the hitter, uh, the guy that's really good. He stole second and third, and then there was a sack fly. So all of a sudden um, they're playing – you know, they kind of they kind of took East Carolina's game away from East Carolina by doing the small ball there. That's, that's a classic Cliff Godwin. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they they were heads up base running in a lot of situations, and I think that one you mentioned, uh, I'm trying to remember correctly, I think there was an error in the infield, and the yeah. ball kind of trickled out in the shallow center field, maybe, and they took advantage of that and and got an extra base. Just things like that. That you know, you you take those things out of the equation. You know, East right. Carolina probably has a lead in that game at one point, and so but you clean up some of those mental mistakes and you know you're you're right there in that game scott based on what we've seen this year um we certainly have our educated guesses but shell Powell says have they named the pitcher for tomorrow night against unc wilmington and of course chris kaler started down there at uncw um a couple weeks ago you know what what are your thoughts there uh it will be uh chris kaler getting a start tomorrow and then matt gaither will get the start for UNCW. And, you know, I kind of figured that it was going to be Kaler coming into this thing, getting the start, and uh, excited to see what he can do at home against uh, against the UNCW team that he's already seen this year. Uh, and, right. you know, other than that, that one inning against UNCW, he had a good start against those guys. And so playing at home tomorrow, I think it's going to have a little bit extra juice. And, you know, Cliff Godwin always they're they're always fired up for games like this against UNCW, the in-state teams, and so 
being back at home playing an in-state opponent, I think this team's going to be fired up, ready to go for a W tomorrow night. A big homestand this week as we have four games, of course, tomorrow night, UNCW, and then UAB for people that don't know because of Easter is always – it's going to be Thursday night, Friday, and Saturday. So it's uh, like Dorothy says in The Wizard of Oz, Scott, there's no place like home. There's not. And, you know, for us to – to, and and I, I had not even really realized that we've had more road games than home games this year, I believe. I, I think I heard that correctly tonight. Nine, uh, nine inside. and one at home. Yeah, and it's six and yeah. five road and nine and one at home. Yep. Right. And so, you know, you, you can't take for granted. You know, and Cliff Godwin hit it perfectly tonight and saying, you know, you're in your you're in your own bed, you're sleeping with your own pillows, and you know, you're you're just more comfortable at home and everybody is. And so getting you know, these four games at home coming up is going to be huge for this ball club and certainly could get them back on the, the right path from a momentum standpoint. Uh, can you give us a time for uh, on air and we'll let, let you get out of here? I know that uh, you're prepping for the game for tomorrow night, but how can people listen to you, Scott? Yeah, 545 airtime tomorrow uh, with a six o'clock first pitch on 94.3 to game and then anywhere on the IBX media app. I uh, don't think we are simulcasted tomorrow on ESPN plus I think there's a few more games this year that we will be but I don't think tomorrow is uh is one of them but yeah 94.3 to game and then the IBX media app for uh people outside of that listening area yeah I know Mullins will be on the broadcast tomorrow night on ESPN plus uh so yeah the simulcast won't be tomorrow night gotcha gotcha <laughs> all right Scott thank you so much man we'll let, we'll let you get back to prepping for that in little league and Appreciate all you do. Thanks for uh, those of us that are like me yesterday driving back uh, to my son's baseball practice. Got a chance to listen to you on the road. The, pretty much the whole game was uh, was uh, Scott Rogers. So thanks for all you're doing. And uh, maybe we can go 4 0 this week. I hope so, man. It would be a, um, a big thing for this club to go 4 0. And that's heading into, you know, four games on the road next week with NC State next Tuesday night and in that road series at FAU. And so having having a lot of momentum heading into next week, I think is going to be big for this ball club. And, you know, you have a good opportunity with that, having all these games at home. All right, uh, Scott, thanks for the visit. Appreciate it, man. And uh, look forward to the, the call tomorrow and all this weekend on 94.3, the game. Yes, sir. Thank you, guys. Appreciate it. All right, you. thanks, Scoot. All right, yep. bye-bye. Appreciate him so much. I know he's got a lot going on and, uh, man, we've got a lot of great uh, people listening and uh, watching. Appreciate that very much. Uh, show is growing, man. Uh, appreciate your hard work, Bubba, behind the scenes. And uh, one of the things we wanted uh, for those listening right now, uh, if it's archived or a podcast form, don't forget about the twenty club, the twenty three club dot org. And Bubba, uh, know that uh, you're involved with that. It's uh, as a supporter, but that's to help the baseball program for NIL, right? Yeah, certainly, uh, you know, do what I can to, I uh, did join uh, on the monthly contribution level. Uh, I did the $23 per month option. So um, I, I know I talked to several former players that are doing the same or more. Um, you know, you saw recently on Instagram, as well as perhaps their ex account uh, for the 23 club that Burley, Alec Burleson uh, joined. And, uh, you know, he's far from by himself, you know, the, the pirate baseball you know, family, and it's a very tight knit and close family. Right. And, um, and they, the former players do an excellent job of giving back. Uh, no doubt. In fact, uh, don't forget not only the 23 club.org, uh, supporting pirate baseball, but also, uh, team boneyard, uh, the supporting all the, uh, sports and, Okay, Dave, I think you froze there for a moment on my end, but uh, but oh. yes, like Dave was saying, support Team Boneyard and go to teamboneyard.org. Um, you know, I know we've obviously um, done a tremendous job. Those guys have uh, Hank Hinton and company yeah. of, of growing Team Boneyard, and uh, we've, as a result, been able to, to land some pretty nice prospects you know, for not only football, um, but men's basketball as well. Um, and I say land prospects, but then also retain prospects. Right. You, know, you have some guys that would have probably left had 
had Team Boneyard not been able to step forward and make some make some commitments to those guys uh, like, like they were able to do. Right, and as you have up on the screen, Bo, for people listening, we're, we've surpassed $1 million, which is awesome, and it's a great start, but we can do even better. We can do better. Um, we need, as Bubba and I were talking about months ago, uh, we really need to be in the 2 to $3 million range. I'm not knocking what they've done. Uh, I'm just supporting them by saying uh, they've done a great job, and I know if they were on here with us, it would say um, it's a great start, but we're going to have to really raise a lot of money and a lot of people right now are saying, Dave, but I have season tickets, I have Pirate Club, I have Team Boneyard, you know, and I have um, Pirates Unite. That's fantastic. But just keep in mind that uh, we need a lot of people. Uh, there are people that don't believe in NIL. That's fine. But there's a lot of people that do. And it comes down to winning. And I love to, like Bubba and I, we love to win. And, um, you know, like we were talking about, uh, Bubba's doing the $23 a month uh, for team uh, 23 and you know it, it comes down to if you can only give ten dollars a month or twenty five dollars a month fifty dollars a month you don't have to give everything you have uh to nil um but if you every little bit helps right bubba it does um that's the that's the thing that davy penny and i were discussing at the saturday game against north carolina at segra stadium down in Fayetteville here uh, you know a month ago that people get so overwhelmed or they think that their a hundred dollar donation doesn't matter. It Obviously does. all the, all the, all those gifts of, you know, a hundred, two hundred and fifty dollars um, you know, the $23 per month, you know, that comes out obviously to be, you know, 276 bucks a year or something of that effect. Uh, all those, you know, you get, Two or three, four thousand people joining at the twenty-three dollars per month, and then suddenly right. you, hit, you have a lot of money. And right. uh, obviously, obviously in baseball, you know, we sell over two thousand season tickets. And sure that, that there aren't two thousand season ticket buyers because some people are buying, you know, four tickets, maybe even six or eight tickets. Right. But if we get if we can get every season ticket holder to join um, the twenty-three club by, you know giving at least $23 or so a month, then we'll be in great shape. No doubt. We'll keep talking. <laughs> to talk about that. But again, the 23 club.org and of course, team boneyard.org. Also, uh, that is a tax deduction. If you go through the, what is the, uh, Oh man, the, I know that you can write a I believe you write a check and make it out to, is it the um, Pitt County? I can't think of the name of the organization now, but yeah, it's for, I'll have to I'm trying to, I'm trying to remember um, maybe his parents for, uh, for public schools in Pitt County or you know, it's so, something to that effect. I, I'll uh, look that up before the show's over, but um, kind of going back to, uh, in pirate baseball, and then specifically the the rankings this week. You know, this graphic is from at ECU Baseball on X, the the official X account of the Pirates. And taking a look at it, the Pirates did drop a few spots, but not as far as you may think. Uh, you know, right. after after a series loss at UTSA, and um, I think the Pirates had some teams below them also have less than stellar weekends and as a result on the pirates and most polls were dropping three and four spots um no more than five uh, you have the ncbwa poll the pirates are 14th d1 baseball ecu went from 10th to 15th uh, the usa today coaches poll on um, the pirates come in at 16th 18th in baseball america and 19th in perfect game by the way, before I forget, Bob, I know we're doing extra innings of baseball show, but want to give a shout out to our softball program, Shane Winkler. What a great job he's done. And uh, our ladies won two out of three at home this weekend at Max Turner Stadium as uh, they they took two out of three that won the series from uh, twenty for, ranked 21st in the country, and that would be Charlotte. So uh, not only to get an in-state uh, conference series win uh, for the American, but also to beat a top 25 program 
says a lot considering uh, where this program has been. And uh, he's already turned around two programs and just want to give a shout out to him as I know he's been great to our program and uh, I'll try to make as many softball games as I can like I did last year. I think I made like five last year. Yeah, and certainly wish I was closer where I was able to attend some on earlier in the season. I guess it was maybe the day of the North Carolina game or uh, maybe even been the opening weekend. But my parents and I walked over and watched the last couple of innings uh, against uh, in the victory in game two of the doubleheader against Longwood. But uh, nice to see them after the rough start to the conference play. Um, some of those games, you know, been very competitive, but unable to, you know, make the make the plays necessary to win against quality competition against the likes of North Texas and Wichita State. But then, as you mentioned, the 21st ranked 49ers at Max Joyner, and we take two out of three, winning games one and three. Uh, you, you had a, a single game on Saturday and then a doubleheader on Sunday because of the weather on Friday. And yesterday, uh, I think it was in, uh, I think it's the ninth inning when we hit the walk-off bomb. Yeah, that's correct. Yeah, And it, it, it was funny because you had Patrick Johnson and Courtney Layton, former Pirates softball player, yeah. you know, all, on the call. And perhaps it was – the win, but you know, they, they misjudged it off the bat and they thought it was going to be a warning track fly out and ended up ending the ball game. But yeah, um, yeah. Ho hopefully that will jump start things in conference play and um, they can, you know, play well down the stretch in the second half of the season and, and definitely put together a winning season and you know, hopefully well above 500. No doubt. By the way, I want to mention really quick before we talk about uh, baseball again, they have a game tomorrow there um, and Max Joyner at 4 o'clock if you have a chance to get over there. And they're taking on Elon, and so that'll be a great chance for you to see that game. And then you can walk over to across the parking lot, if you will, uh, to Clark or Claire at 6 o'clock as the Pirates are taking on uh, UNCW. And uh, good luck to the Pirates, Bubba. It's always crazy, but uh, with our fan base, I know that even though it's a Tuesday night, we'll have a really good uh, turnout tomorrow night whether it's the jungle, the stadium itself, the great seats behind home plate. Uh, it's going to be a great atmosphere and uh, look forward to a great game. And then we're hosting UAB this weekend, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. So uh, it will be it should be a great atmosphere. I think the weather is going to be pretty good as well. Yeah, fingers crossed that we'll have good weather for that Thursday, Friday, Saturday series. You know, make sure you note that, Pirate fans. Uh, obviously, it's typically Friday through Sunday, but always changes on Easter weekend. And um, and that's the case for most conferences around the country. But uh, getting back to the action on the field last week, you know, what a week for Ryan McChrystal. Ryan McChrystal, eight for, eight for 16. You know, he was batting cleanup over the weekend against the Roadrunners, at least the final couple games of that series. And uh, for good reason. Uh, Ryan, like I mentioned, eight for 16, six runs batted in, a triple, a home run, one of four Pirate home runs uh, yesterday as, you know, unfortunately, three of those four homers were solo shots. And pretty funny comment uh, from Coach Godwin concerning those, uh, you know, them being, quote, wind aided, um, a comment that was made by UTSA's head coach. And so definitely go and check out that 20-minute conversation between Patrick Johnson, Stephen Igo, and the head coach of the Pirates, Cliff Godwin, uh, from earlier today. But uh, congratulations to Ryan McChrystal on his 8-for-16, 6-RBI, a triple and a home run week. And, um, you know, he's really become you know, the guy at the 8. Sure, it's going to change some, but, uh, you know, as long as he's swinging the bat as he is, He's going to be uh, in the lineup, be it at DH or behind the plate. And then for our PGXGloves.com Pitcher of the Week, congratulations to Wyatt Lunsford Shingman. Really had a decision to make here. Uh, you, you had an excellent midweek start at Elon. Chris Kaler went five innings, uh, allowing just one run on two hits, as we mentioned earlier. 
But without Wyatt Lunsford Shinkman's performance in the middle innings on Saturday, who knows? Um, the Pirates may get swept um, in San Antonio. So for his two and two thirds uh, innings of shutout baseball, he did surrender three hits, three strikeouts, and a walk, uh, picking up the win in relief. Wyatt Lunsford Shinkman uh, put up those three zeros, allowed ECU to build a 12 4 advantage. And ECU obviously needed um, those runs because they went on to a 14 to 10 win. So congratulations to Wyatt Lunsford Shinkman on being our PGXGloves.com pitcher of the week. Yeah, he's uh, really been great out of the pen and uh, he was clutch. He's been clutch and he was clutch uh, there on Saturday. If not, we like you said, I feel like he's the reason why we won that game uh, because they were, he, what was it, three innings? I mean, that, and uh, we we ended up having 12 runs. And like you said, Bubba, we needed every single run and then some. But the good news is we've played them, and uh, now we're coming home, and we'll be home this week. And then uh, we have the home game next week. Uh, what is the state? And then we have, obviously, with uh, playing in Boca Raton with uh, FAU. So we, we definitely need to have a good week. And you know what? Uh, no need to get in the panic room as we have great talent. Just clean things up, and um, we'll be fine. And moving on to some results from around the American. Of course, uh, you have UAB, as you mentioned, coming in this weekend and with the Blazers last week. They were at home. Um, they, they were taking on – bear with me here as I get right. my notes. Uh, but right. UAB uh, – one and two, they were at home against Wichita State and the Shockers after falling five to three in the series opener, bounced back with a nine to two and nine to one win or wins uh, on Saturday and Sunday. You had Florida Atlantic and they also start league play at two and one, 14 and eight overall. The Owls uh, take down the Charlotte 49ers in back to back one run games. Four to three and six to five before losing the series finale, thirteen to one. Uh, so the so Robert Woodard and Charlotte able to stave off the sweep there. Tulane fifteen and nine overall, two and one after taking two out of three at Rice. So like Wichita State, they're able to win a series on the road, uh, fourteen to seven, ten to one before falling to the Owls, four to two in the series finale. Uh, South Florida. The Bulls are 14 and 10 overall, two and one in the league, uh, losing 16 to seven in the series opener against Memphis um, before bouncing back with nine to five and five to three victories. Uh, you have UTSA, 12 and 12 overall, now are the Roadrunners. Then, uh, then uh, of course, two and one in the league. The Pirates, one and two, 16 and six. Uh, you have. Uh, I talked about UAB being one and two. They're eleven and twelve overall. Um, they they've certainly played some quality competition, um, and they've had a midweek game against Alabama and some some other um, good games there in the non-con. And then you have uh, the Memphis Tigers. I talked about how they dropped two out of three. They're twelve and fourteen overall. And then you have Charlotte. Um, pretty surprising that they're eleven and fourteen. And uh, the Rice Owls right now at the bottom um, of the standings. Uh, overall, you have them with a nine and fifteen mark. So uh, they they have how things look after opening weekend in the American. Uh, well, it's uh, it's still early, and so for people like I said, don't panic. Everything is going to be good. I've been looking here, um, Bubba. In fact, uh, how about this? Oh, oh, you know, um, those, uh, the, you know, why should we play East Carolina? We're an ACC school. Well, guess what? The start, guess what the starting uh, prices are for that game next Tuesday in Raleigh at Doak Field. <laughs> Try $61 all the way up to 200 and some, some dollars a ticket. So if you don't think that it matters for Pirate Baseball and to play in-state opponents, think again. I know the people watching and listening know that, but – it just tickles me how everybody acts like, oh, yeah, we should never play ECU because it does us no good. But yet 
they'll be sold out. You better believe it. No matter where we go, it's sold out. And something I meant to bring up on that, that was not atypical for the Pirates to have such a large turnout at Elon. Like I mentioned, they announced the crowd just shy of 700. And you know, if that was the case, and I honestly thought it was probably more than that in attendance, but um, it was a 4 p.m. Wow. first pit, 4 p.m. first pitch, and you know, at least 80 to 85 percent, and that's probably a conservative estimate. Um, and then you had at least you know, 500, 550 pirates. But um, going to a comment here, you know, we have. I appreciate Josh Thomas chiming in via X saying that he's going to have Parker Bird snapback hats that he's been working on. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, Josh, but I believe these are going to be of the Richardson brand uh, because uh, we discussed this. I believe it was UNC weekend on that Sunday, and I told you that I would certainly buy one from you, but my big head will not fit uh, into a Richardson hat. Um, but some will have to see if we can get some of those uh, in the outdoor cap brand. Um, I'm sure um, Parker Bird's family will you know, allow us to do so. And we will certainly do, you know, what Josh is with his proceeds. He said 100 percent you know, of the proceeds of that cap and those sales will go to Parker Bird through the 23 club and so that that's awesome uh, so glad you're doing that josh and i know pirate nation will will respond in a big way i'm looking forward to going to newburn a uh, great town a great city the city of newburn as they have the uh newburn south Poles and the uh they're in the old St north state league starting this year uh and uh they're gonna have parker bird playing this summer so that'll most likely be memorial day through uh, the first or second week of August is usually college summer baseball, summer league baseball. So that's going to be really cool. So if you're a Parker Bird fan, uh, check out the uh, Newburn Cell Pauls and their schedule, and you can find and follow him around all summer long. So that's really cool. Uh, by the way, uh, Bubba, I want to let you know that JR says UAB currently has the lowest RPI in the AAC at 156. Uh, so Pirates have got to uh, win those games, and and uh, you lose those games, that really hurts. Um, so you got to win those games, certainly at home. But also the big one is, uh, first thing is to, to win tomorrow night against uh, UNCW with the Seahawks. Yeah, it is. Um, hopefully we'll come out and you know, take care of business tomorrow night. I'm I'm betting that uh, that will be the case. I think, you know, on both sides, um, it was not a very clean baseball game a couple weeks ago right. down in the Port City. And uh, Coach Godwin was laughing about that earlier today, just saying, he said, I, I really, really hope that, you know, we come out. Yes, I was happy that we got the, um, got the win last time, but uh, made it far too interesting. And uh, I'm sure UNC Wilmington kind of feels the same way about their performance. So uh, I think we'll see a, a more clean game tomorrow night. Hopefully another solid midweek outing and start from Chris Kaler. Yeah, that's going to be great again. 545 if you're listening to the game with uh, 94, 94-3 94 the game uh, with Scott Rogers and Coach O. And then, of course, uh, Mike Mully. I know he's going to be uh, – Mullis is going to be on the ESPN Plus broadcast. So you have both radio and television – there at Clark LeClaire Stadium should be a great yep. one. Bubba, do you have anything before we go, my friend? I know we'll no, talk. Yeah, yeah. Mully certainly does a tremendous job alongside uh, P Man on the on the call, and you know, right. uh, really, uh, really uh, with him, you know, having such a strong background in the game, you know, playing at the minor league level and and coaching, you know, you know highly successful Legion teams, and also uh, pit community with Tommy Eason really value his opinion when it when it comes to sports in general but specifically baseball right and um you know i'm sure we'll have him back on sometime throughout the season no doubt I want to remind you our good friend at pgxgloves.com we want to give a shout out to our good friend it's normally sunday nights so last night was kind of tough for all of us to get together so thanks for uh watching tonight uh but our good friend mark manikazi 
uh, for pgxgloves.com. Go there. In fact, if you put in the promo code ECU, you get, what, 20% off, Bubba? Uh, so put in ECU. And uh, my kids, both are for baseball and softball, those gloves are top-notch. And I tell you what, Bubba, the kids are asking about, hey, Alex McKenzie, where do you get those gloves? They thought it was like at Walmart. I said, you can't go to Walmart. No offense to Walmart. You can't go to Walmart. You have to go to pgxgloves.com. So uh, I know in our local softball and baseball leagues, the kids were uh, really, they thought those designs that Mark Minikazi did at pgxgloves.com were very cool. So uh, you can be like the star uh, as far as the having the best gloves in the league by going to pgxgloves.com. And if you're a golfer, it's a perfect time to go ahead and get a, a golf glove. Your golf gloves, uh, they've got lots of great swag, like the hat that Bubba, if you're watching right now, archive or live, that hat is awesome and uh, good stuff there. I uh, love that logo uh, there on the hat. But again, go to pgxgloves.com, the official sponsor of x -Trainings. Thanks for uh, Kaz being with us for the last four or five years, uh, no doubt. I think since 2019, Bubba, something like that. Yeah, Kaz has been a loyal sponsor of ours over the last five years or so. I uh, appreciate him you know, always supporting the program. And then also a shout out to Big Ed Watkins. Big He's Ed. a title, sp title sponsor with Ed Watkins Marine for Absolute Empowerment. If you've not uh, enjoyed that conversation between former East Carolina Strength and Conditioning Coach Jeff Connors and Cliff Godwin, go and check that out. Uh, also, um, Coach C's caught up with the likes of former Pirate linebacker Mark Libiano, Jeff Carr, um, Holt Nailers, you know, talking so much more than their specific sports. They're talking life. They're talking you know, the faith and uh, a lot of things um, are discussed in those conversations. So when you have some free time, maybe you're on a long road trip uh, looking for something to listen to. You know, other than just music, definitely give those conversations that Coach Connors has had uh, with many of those people that I just named and also excellent conversations with non-ECU-related uh, guests uh, such as strength and conditioning coach at Ohio State, uh, etc. cetera. Um, Donnie Kiefer, um, legendary high school football coach in the state of North and um, South Carolina. He won multiple state titles in the Palmetto State. Um, and then also, you know, edwatkinsmarine.com. That's where you can meet all your boating needs. You know, here we are nearing the end of the month of March. Before you know it, it's going to be time to get out on the water. So go to edwatkinsmarine.com. Uh, they have two locations to serve you in Denver and Cornelius, which are, of course, in the greater Charlotte area of our state. Fishing boats, family-friendly bow riders, center consoles, trailers, pontoon boats, engines, UTVs, you name it, they can meet your boating needs. And uh, even though they're located in the Charlotte area, I know Big Ed has delivered uh, multiple boats to the eastern part of the state, loyal pirate fans and others uh, buying his products. So um, definitely, if you're in the market for a boat, Ed Watkins Marine is the place for you. Hey, yeah, by the way, uh, Big Ed, can you deliver a pontoon boat <laughs> to Williamston if the price is right? I know I'm just kidding, but Ed EdWatkinsMarine.com, he's the best. I love Big Ed with talking about NASCAR and that. And Bubba, I know another great thing uh, is home field. Yep. I've been slack and getting that link on our Facebook page as well as on our X account. But... Um, We'll definitely take care of that um, as far as the link you can purchase directly from, and then and then we get a kickback from that. Um, excellent pirate selections, uh, the script pirates logo as you see there on the screen. Um, very sharp hoodies. I know Jared Plummer that runs the ECU Jungle account on X. He has that script pirates hoodie, and, uh, and he loves it. And um, and other pirate friends have purchased from Homefield as well. So go to homefieldapparel.com and they have an excellent pirate selection as well as over 150 other colleges and universities. Um, in addition to hoodies, uh, obviously t shirts, long sleeve, short sleeve, um, the, the current um, contemporary marks uh, like the skull and crossbones, but then also 
the vintage marks that pirate fans love so much. So take advantage of these offers and the, the opportunity to, to save a little uh, at checkout by using promo code TSO and then also by using our link, which uh, will be pinned on the top of our Facebook and X accounts. Yeah, don't forget the promo code TSO for 15% off because uh, you can do a great deal and a great uh, birthday present or maybe uh, for when you're thinking about the holidays coming up. It'll, they'll be here before you know it. Uh, I have some family and friends that uh, they buy all year round. So if you think about you have a pirate on your list, hey, you can go ahead and rack up there. Uh, that home field apparel is awesome stuff. And Bubba, before we get out of here, I know that we're the podcast for Pirates and we're everywhere on social media, right? Yeah, give us a follow on X at the Sports OBJ on Instagram and TikTok. Um, you know, as long as we have TikTok, we'll see how we'll see how that we'll be fine. We'll how that story develops. But uh, on Instagram and TikTok, we can be found at the Sports Objective, and then simply search the Sports Objective on Facebook, and then on YouTube. Be sure to subscribe. We're closing in on twelve hundred subscribers. And uh, when, when you subscribe, click that notification bell and all that way, anytime we go live or upload new content, such as sights and sounds, you know, we often have sights and sounds from Clark LeClaire. And then of course, also Minji's Coliseum and Dowdy Ficklin uh, during pirate football and men's basketball seasons. Um, but Shout out also to at ECU Jungle and Jared Plummer for allowing us to use those videos. Of course, giving him credit um, and and then allowing Pirate fans you know, far and wide uh, to see the atmosphere at Clark LeClaire Stadium in the jungle. Does a great job and uh, appreciate Jared uh, very, very much. And uh, by the way, folks, uh, as far as the games are concerned, tomorrow night, uh, we told you UNCW will be 6 o'clock. And then for Thursday night, 6 o'clock, UAB. Friday night, 6 o'clock. And then on Saturday, uh, me, keep that in mind, it's Thursday, Friday, Saturday, because of Easter. Saturday's game is at noon. All three of those games are going to be great. And then, of course, you know, tomorrow night as well. Uh, we'll see how the Pirates make out. And uh, wish the Pirates good luck as we're going to get back on track. I feel good. I feel good about this week. So, uh, we'll see how it goes. Bubba, for you, for Matt, for Kyle, for everybody, all our listeners and viewers, I want to wish everybody a happy Easter as we have Easter on Sunday. So we'll try to see if we can do a show Sunday night or it might be again on Monday night We'll on Easter Monday. We'll see how, but hopefully we'll be talking about next week on Extra Innings about in the matter of days, we'll be talking about a 4 no week. Yeah, I think we'll respond the way – you would expect us to respond. And in the words of coach Godwin from a few years ago, I guess back in, I guess 18 or it was yeah, 20, 2018 with Trey Benton, Trey didn't get off to the best of starts um, before you know, turning things around and having an excellent season. But, um, you know, when he was struggling in his first two or three outings, you know, the media asked coach if he had any concern and he, he's like, zero worry. He got me. So, <laughs> I thought you were. Those, those are my thoughts uh, about the about the the week that was, and I, I think we'll bounce back. Certainly win at least three, and you know, hopefully go four and zero. I thought you were talking about twenty nineteen. We had that road series with uh, UCLA, and we lost three close games. And you had that. Uh, I think you wrote. Yeah, I had the social media oh. post some something about bouncing back, and yeah, <laughs> coach, coach responded to that and said, "Hey, we bounced back." <laughs> so he does read social media after all, but that was classic for Bubba. I love that. I'm teasing you because uh, it was great that we won, and that was against Elon. I'll never forget that game as long as we live. All right, we'll get out of here. Thank you, Bubba, as always, my friend, for a great job. Don't forget about Absolute Empowerment. Uh, we've got lots of great content. You can go anywhere on social media, as we told you about. We'll get out of here, and I hope you guys have a great evening. And as always, go Pirates. <laughs> That concludes this week's edition of Extra Innings, presented by PGXGloves.com on the Sports Objective. Join us again next Sunday night as we will again talk East Carolina Pirate Baseball. Be sure to follow the Sports Objective on social media. It can be found at the Sports OBJ on X, at the Sports Objective on Instagram and TikTok. 
Like and follow the show on Facebook and subscribe to our YouTube channel. When you subscribe, be sure to click the notification bell and all so you're alerted on your device anytime we go live or upload new content. As always, we appreciate you watching and listening to the show. Go Pirates!